Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be with you today. I hope your world is going well and that your family, everybody is producing and functioning as God designed. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Thank you always for the good notes you send us, the encouragement and all means so much. We got a beautiful letter this morning uh, from a lady who had given CellQuest, you know, that's a product that we offer on this program from time to time and the person had really been helped and it's great to have this interchange, you know. Uh, we love being here for you. If you saw the last program, I was talking to Jeffrey Moore and we'll be talking to him again today. Wrote an incredible book called We Believed and it's about a, their life story and I've never heard anything like it in my life. They felt that the Lord wanted them to have an international adoption and they went to Africa, they went to India, and <clears throat> finally ended up in Peru where they adopted four siblings and we're continuing with that story today. So I just wanted to catch you up on it a little bit. I've, you know, when you see the hand of God in these kind of situations, it's just downright thrilling that four lives have really been changed and saved for his kingdom. Then I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make another pasta dish. Probably have a different pasta dish for a whole year every day. I bet you could. Uh, this one's uh, bow ties with sausage and asparagus. And that sounds like a pretty good combination. So we'll put that together for you and give you our opinion of it. And uh, I want to again just to remind you, we're viewer supported. That means you wonderful folks out there, you support us and we appreciate it. The information on exactly how to do that is on your screen. If you use a debit card or credit card, uh, that 800 number is for you. And also the address if you like to send your uh, donations through the mail. Either way, we could never thank you enough. So God bless you. And uh, we're about to put something together here. I thought this had some interesting flavors. It's interesting, but it doesn't have a sauce. So I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but I'm sure it'll be delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that I is, have sausage. That is kind of strange. Yeah, so I have sausage in here, and I'm going to put some onions in, and we're going to get those sautéing. Mm -hmm. The sausage smells really good. And uh, I'm cutting up the asparagus, asparagus, which really is my favorite. The first time ever I tried asparagus was on this show. Really? Did you like it? I think I remember liking it, yes. That and Brussels sprouts. Never had tried Brussels sprouts Well, if you either. said you had a favorite, what would it be? My favorite vegetable? Mm-hmm. Mm, a hard question. Yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite vegetable. <laughs> I love sweet potatoes. Oh, no, I don't eat sweet potatoes. You don't sweet? No. Okay, my favorite vegetable is a potato, which is not good for <laughs> me. <so. laughs> potato that has no flavor, so you just do what you yes, want with it, and it tastes that's, good. That's mashed and has um, butter and milk in it. No, <laughs> cream. <laughs> a lot of cream. Yeah, so I'm just heating this up. I'm um, sauteing this. We have garlic we have asparagus we have bow ties and cheese i would think of a little bit of olive oil or something something to... you would think it does say to add a little bit of the pasta water mm -hmm. at the end if you need to well also i'm gonna um, put the garlic in and you know uh, as i said at the top of the show we could probably do a pasta dish every day for a year yes we could there's no end to the it. only pasta i want is my dad's really well that's we all true know that i'm gonna put the Asparagus All of these go in there. Get it cooking. Yep. Oops. Oh Oops. my. It's <laughs> it's going oh, everywhere. Oh dear. <laughs> you were trying to be so fancy no matter with how the you knife. Try. Yeah. <laughs> so let me just. But saute you can this. see where that uh, sausage is really going to flavor everything. Yes, the sausage smells really good. And I have tons of sausage in my freezer, so I could use this recipe. Is that from hunting? hunting. Yes. Yeah, uh, did you say your son has a place he where just you, could, you, property. Could, yep. you could hunt year-round, so you might not see your husband very often? I have, well, my, I'm going to Tennessee next week to see my folks and help my mom with her flower beds, and my husband agreed to go, but everyone's like, probably, that's just probably like his last road trip until he goes to the <laughs> woods and you never see him again. Yeah, until he yeah. goes to heaven. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I don't think what's I'll be wrong with the flower beds? Uh, they just need to be redone, you know, after winter up there. They just need to be re... re Springtime mm -hmm. in Tennessee. Yeah, could you put a little bit of water in there for me, please? Yeah. Preferably hot, but... 
I won't be picky. What about, uh, I think I might put a little bit of uh, Alfredo sauce in there. It just needs, <laughs> it, I think it needs, it's going to need something. Like this is. Just a little bit. Though yeah. it's, I don't know, it doesn't look awfully dry to me. No, really it's not does. super dry. I just mm -hmm. don't, um, I don't know. We'll see once you taste it. And once you put cheese, I mean, cheese mm -hmm. makes everything better. Cheese covers a multitude of cooking sin. Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. <laughs> oh. And, and what would we do? What would we do without pasta? Right. So I'll have spaghetti next week. My dad's mm -hmm. spaghetti. Will you be bringing the sauce home? I'll bring. I'll post a picture because I always do just to irritate my siblings. Mm -hmm. Although my brother will be up there too because he's replacing windows. Well, aren't you good kids? He's replacing windows. I'm doing flower beds. He's got a list. I don't have as long of a list this time. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, well, they did a lot for us, so mm -hmm. we can do for them. And then my other, my sister is coming over to visit since we're all there, so it'll be a nice visit. It's going to sound like a family reunion. It's supposed to be 70s during the day, mm -hmm. 50s at night. I'll take it. Uh-huh. I see some porch sitting, coffee drinking times well, coming up. Send us a lot of pictures. Oh, I will. Definitely. Okay. Okay, we're going to taste this. Put and some yummy cheese. The on reason it. we're doing this one, it's just the combination was just fascinating with the sausage and the asparagus. Yeah, I'd probably do salt and pepper and that maybe would, uh, garlic with, salt and. Well, with sausage, do you need a lot of other? Well, I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Try I to get like, a little bit of everything. Yeah, here. get the asparagus. Mm-hmm. Well. Mm. Do you ever use your finger? This I, would be a great base, a great base dish. Then you could add your flavors mm -hmm. uh -huh. too. That's what this would be good for. I'm telling you, it's good. I'm gonna put the cheese in it. Ah. I'm being told from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'm telling you, it doesn't need. Is a, it good? It doesn't okay, need a I'm sauce. Gonna, I gotta taste mm -hmm. it because it doesn't need a sauce. I don't know if I believe you. Okay, tell me if you believe me. Okay. I would never lead you astray, intentionally. Right. Mm -hmm. Got it. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So good. That's so much. It doesn't need sauce. Okay. That is so much better. I would put a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. but that's all I would add because mm -hmm. that's better than I ever thought it would be. And it's called Bow Ties with Sausage and Asparagus. Mm -hmm. It's free for you. Uh, the information is coming up on your screen and uh, there are several ways you can get it. So take your choice and I hope you enjoy it. And thanks, you know, sometimes you write us and tell us you enjoy the recipes. We love it. We do love it. So um, you can take advantage of that and then you're gonna hear this wonderful story by Jeffrey Moore. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, I want to welcome back uh, Jeffrey Moore. Thank you for hanging around. You're and, welcome. Uh, you know, like we said on the last show, the story is just too big for, for one show. <laughs> if you didn't see it yesterday, uh, this is an odyssey where the Lord spoke to enter to uh, adopt international some international children or an international child, and it really is a ten year. Odyssey. Uh, is. I, I, I keep trying to imagine what you were thinking and you and your wife going through emotionally, and I'm sure I don't come close to what it was in reality. But when we left off yesterday, uh, you had been to Africa, mm -hmm. and that didn't work out. And uh, so I think you were in India when we. Uh, stopped down yesterday. That's right. We started our home study process and we were we had moved houses and got into a bigger house mm -hmm. and we were still trying to determine the country that we were going to adopt from. And so we were feeling some calling from to India at that time, another one of those puzzle pieces that God was giving us in mm -hmm. our lives. And so we said, well, let's go. So we went, um, my wife and I and our son, who was, uh, let's see, probably eight by that time in 2012. And we went on a two-week family mission trip to India. We connected with some missionaries there that God sovereignly brought into our path. They mm -hmm. actually visited our church uh, at the time uh, from India, and it was really amazing. And so we got connected us there. We went over and had a great trip. We saw God do some amazing things, um, healings, 
Uh, we got to pray for orphanages and, and orphans, you know, and different yeah, you contexts. You didn't waste your time. We did not you, waste you our time. You were in ministry no. the whole time. Yes, yes, we were. We were. Um, but similar to Africa, we came back from India and did not feel like that God was, was leading us to adopt from India. Um, and so just a few days later, we, we actually made the choice to adopt from Peru because Peru was one of the countries that our agency also worked with. And literally, uh, the next day or maybe two days later, India shut down their international adoption program temporarily because they were restructuring it uh, indefinitely. And so we felt like that was a clear confirmation that we had made the right decision uh, to go with Peru. So you were, you were going to a real kind of broad-based worldwide uh, mm -hmm. system for different countries, and you were kind of trying them out, trying to really find God's will in it. We were, yes. We were really just trying to determine, you know, what was God's will for us? Um, well, what's the difference between Peru, India, and Africa? Are there any superior in, I would say, capitalism or the way things are run? Um, there's definitely some differences, you know, culturally. There's differences mm -hmm. economically. Um, it depends on, you know, in Burkina Faso, where we went uh, in West Africa, is a landlocked country. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very poor, very depressed economically. Mm -hmm. um, and, but India and Peru, there's, there's some differences. I mean, mm -hmm. you have, like, in Peru, you have Lima that is very, has some very high-end uh, areas. One of the top ten restaurants in the world is in Lima, really? Peru. Yes. Did you eat there? We did not eat there. We wanted to, but we didn't get a chance to. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, a really interesting culture. But then you also have some areas, um, like up in the Andes and the mountains, that are very poor mm -hmm. um, and much more depressed economically as well. So uh, y you go to Peru. Did you have any kind of information before you got there uh, as to the possibility of, of the child or children that would work for you and your family? We did. So by the time we got to Peru, we had worked through the home study process. Uh, we were working with an agency in Denver, of course, at that time. And they had been uh, periodically showing us groups of siblings that matched our approval profile that were, were adoptable. And each group that we came into our, our, our eyes, we just, we just prayed and asked the Lord to tell us, you know, is, is this the right group? Exactly. I mean, they're all in need, right? Uh -huh. um, and, and it's an old saying that we can't help everyone, but if everyone helps someone, you know, then um, it makes the difference, you know, in so the what's So what's the story of the, the four children that you did mm -hmm. adopt? They were siblings. Mm -hmm. What happened That's with right. their parents? So their parents made some, some poor decisions uh, in life, mm -hmm. and it led them to a place where uh, they were not caring for the children, uh, not caring for them appropriately. And so the, ki the kids were removed uh, and sent to an orphanage. And then uh, subsequent to that, uh, the parents actually relinquished their rights um, for, for care for the children, and that allowed them to be able to be adopted. Is Peru one that said that the children have to be abandoned before they can be adopted? It, well, yes, of course. Yeah, it certainly, certainly it's true. Yeah. So, to me, the nightmare <laughs> of your story is that week <laughs> in Peru. I had no idea. Folks, you got to get this book and read it. And we're going to get the uh, website up on the screen. Uh, we believed. But I didn't think international adoptions would be anything. I'm sure there are complications, but nothing like you went through. <laughs> You, you know, went through the fire. We did, and there's there's so much paperwork that has to happen before you even go to the other country. You would think that once you got there, that it would all be done, mm -hmm. but that's not the case, and that's not the way it works. Uh, we were actually in Peru for a month, uh, from 30 days uh, that we were there to complete the process. The first part of the process was completing the actual adoption. So we flew to the city where the kids lived, and um, we we visited them at the orphanage for a couple of days. You know, took them out for outings. And then they came to live with us in an apartment in their city that we had rented. Uh, and during that time, a social worker would come periodically and make visits to make sure the kids were adjusting well, that we were adjusting well. Um, and that process took about two weeks. Well, I think that's encouraging to know that Peru has those kind of parameters and, and yes. they're, they're really on top of it. Yeah. Uh, what was it like the first time you took them out? Did they trust you? you? You took them for a little outing from the orphanage. Um, and it's four. How old are they? Yes. So at the time, they were two, uh, three, seven, and nine at the time that we first met them. Uh, Nine-year-olds yeah, so scare me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and three girls and one boy. That's right. That's right. And how'd that go? You know, it went really, really well. Um, these kids were so ready to be adopted. 
Um, I mean, there's a picture in my book that mm -hmm. our oldest adopted daughter, Elizabeth, uh, drew when she learned mm -hmm. at the orphanage that she was going to be adopted. And there's hearts, there's rainbows, there's smiles. I mean, they wanted to be in a family and they were so ready for a family. I had this moment, uh, I have to tell you, I'll probably tear up when I tell you, but um, so we took them to a mall, uh, an American style mall actually in their, in their city uh, and had lunch at, at KFC because mm. uh, they all like fried oh. chicken. And so we, we had, had fried chicken. <laughs> Can't get away from that no matter right, where you exactly. go. <laughs> and then we went to a little um, a playground inside the mall there. And my oldest daughter, Elizabeth, um, she was climbing up on a, on a platform. Is that she was, the oldest one? She's the oldest, before. yeah. She was nine at the time. Um, she was climbing up on a platform um, that was, you know, chest high to me and doing trust falls backwards into my arms from well, that position. she trusted you. And I just, I couldn't imagine what kind of trust that takes. I mean, she just met me. That was the first day, you know, that she had met me. But, but God was already working in their hearts, even from that moment. Um, there's, a, there's another book coming out in the future because my daughter Elizabeth actually had um, some dreams and visions about being adopted. Uh, and that's not in this book. That'll be in a future book. Um, I'm hoping that we'll write together. But God was already preparing them uh, to, be, to be a part of our family. So uh, in the process, you have a small apartment in Peru, mm -hmm. and the children are there, and the social worker shows up once in a while. Yes, that's right. That's right. And, and um, uh, you know, the paperwork made me crazy Yes. just reading about it and getting them on a plane. And mm -hmm. was there ever a moment that, throw up my hands and quit. <laughs> you know, there was a moment that first week that they were in the apartment with us. Um, and there were so many things that um, I talk about in the book, you know, we were sick, we had colds and uh, one of the kids had to go to the doctor. Uh, my son stepped on a, on a nail. My son, Jonathan from Peru, stepped on a nail at the playground. And I mean, there were just crazy things going on. The spiritual climate there was just very, very dark. They were having parades to, I don't even know how to describe it. It was very, very dark. Um, spiritually and it was really really hard and, and then the physical environment there the apartment we were able to rent you know on short notice um, it was basically had like, the, the kitchen was open air to the outside it was in the 30s at night um, my wife was was hand washing clothes for seven people with no hot water just oh cold water Lord. and in a, in a, in a basin and, and then hanging them out to dry I mean it was very very hard and there was a moment in that week that I, I said to the Lord I, I, I said I'm giving you 24 hours. If this something doesn't change in this time, we're going to mm -hmm. have to figure out if we're going to continue. Yes, and uh, he was on yesterday and uh, again today, but you really need to get the book. It's, it's worth it just to read about that one uh, week in Peru. Just, But you did get on an airplane, and you, did, mm -hmm. you flew to Houston, right? We did, mm -hmm. yep. We flew from their small city to Lima, and we had some additional documentation to get in Lima so they could get their visas to come to the United States. Yeah, and there's, no end. there's no end. There's no end to the I know. paperwork. And uh, I think most Americans probably like me, you don't think of that. Y you uh, don't. You don't. It's for people that aren't familiar with the process. It's quite a shock when they learn all the steps that are involved. And, and then, that, then from Houston to, Den to mm -hmm. Denver. Yes. Um, were they immediately American citizens or did you have to do more there? They were. Thankfully, um, the way the process and the laws are now, is once they arrive into the U.S., you know, legally adopted, then they do become U.S. citizens right away, which is a blessing. Okay, now, it's been, what, a couple years? It's been almost two years. Mm -hmm. Not quite two uh, years. How are things going? I'll tell you who I'm concerned. I'm concerned about your Joshua, because yes. he was an only child mm -hmm. uh, for all those years. But the way I read the book, he was right in there. He has done amazing. Um, it's been beautiful to see how well he's adjusted. Coming how unselfish he is. I, I know. Coming from being an only child, you know, talking about the adoption and adding siblings for all these years, and then actually seeing it happen and bringing in four siblings all at once, um, mm -hmm. it was very challenging. And, you know, in those early days when we first came back to our home, they, the, their adopted children were trying to figure out their place, you know, in the family, and we were trying to figure out our place, you know, as the parents and, and older brother. Uh, in the family, and, and there, were, there were some difficult times. What about the language barrier? Mm -hmm. So they spoke Spanish in Peru, and uh, I had had Spanish in high school and college, uh, which was a blessing, oh, but I hadn't, was, yeah. I hadn't practiced much yes. in all those yeah. years. Uh, our oldest son, Joshua, is homeschooled, and so my wife and he did um, Spanish as part of their homeschool curriculum for a number of years before we went to Peru. So he became almost fluent uh, while he was there in Peru for a month. 
okay, how did they adopt? I keep thinking the two older ones. Mm -hmm. How did they, they adapt mm -hmm. to the United States of America and uh, every, everything new, everything strange? Was there any upsets? Um, there were some difficult days, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were diff difficult days. Uh, they all packed a bag once. They were going to run away. Uh, meaning they were going to go back to the airport and, uh -huh. and get a plane to Peru. That was, that <laughs> was their plan. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, there, was, there were other difficult moments as well, just making that adjustment. You know, They'd rather go back to an orphanage. Yeah, because yeah, it's There's another spiritual <laughs> lesson. Just like the Israelites when yes, they went to the yes, desert, right? Yeah. They said, send us back to Egypt, yeah. you know, with the onions and the leeks. Yeah. Um, we want to go back to what's familiar, even though it's, it's, it's difficult and not the blessed place for us. Now, two years isn't that long it's for, for mm -hmm. this. Do they seem to feel at home now? They think? do. Yeah, every month that we've been back has been better and better. Um, certainly, we still have uh, issues, and having five kids, um, anyone with a large family understands the yeah, issues you have between one. siblings and sibling rivalries and things like that. Um, that's all normal part of, of a big family. Are they in public school? Yes, three of them are in public school. Uh, they're doing very, very well. We have a great public school. Um, just down the street from our house, and they have a lot of diversity there. There's kids from probably 30 different countries uh, that go to that school. And they have your name now? Yes, yes. Yep, they have our last name. And so it's been a blessing. The school's been a blessing to us. Now, had they had any uh, religious training before you got them? Mm -hmm. They had a little bit. Um, the, ca the orphanage that they were a part of was Catholic, uh -huh. um, so it was run by the Catholic Church there that was next door. Well, they and, knew who um, Jesus was. So they knew who Jesus was. They had been to some, some um, mm -hmm. religious services and things like that. So they had a basic understanding. They had a prayer that they had memorized to recite. Um, and so they had a basic understanding, but they have blossomed uh, in our home and just learning more about Jesus, attending church, and just talking. You know, when we first, when we first brought them into our home, because they didn't know any English, we did not take them to our church. So we just did church at home, mm -hmm. and it was really a blessing because we could we could oh, sing yeah. worship songs and, and we could stop and we could explain the words, we could read scripture, we could talk about it. You know, it wasn't just like you're hearing this and trying to assimilate it in a different language, and we could explain things to them and how um, what we believed about Jesus was different than what they had learned uh, in different contexts. And so it was it was really amazing. They've done amazing. Well, you know, I <clears throat> I am a great grandmother, and. I've never before seen a living, breathing illustration of what James said mm. about pure and undefiled mm. religion. Wow. You guys are it. Well, you did it. Thank you. You that's, did it. That's amazing. And mm. um, I just love for the viewers to hear this. First place, a lot of them pray. Mm -hmm. I mean, pray for this family. Yes, please. But... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think you could have a new book about every three years <laughs> uh, as they become more Americanized mm -hmm. and see what their values are. Mm -hmm. Do they ever talk about Peru now? They do. You know, that's one of the things that we've been very open about. We want them to remember. We want them. They have some pictures that we took while we were there of their friends and the, the, uh, the tias, the aunts at the orphanage, they call them, um, that took care of them for those years they were there. Uh, we printed out pictures for them, and we talked about things that happened there, uh, positive and negative, good things and bad things. And Do they remember their birth parents? Um, just, just a little bit, yeah. The older two, the oldest one, Elizabeth, remembers them um, fairly well. Uh, Jonathan, a little bit, and the younger two, not really at all. Yeah, I, I just was thinking maybe uh, the viewers didn't catch what I was talking about. I want you to help me with it. Uh, Book of James says pure religion mm -hmm. and pure and undefiled religion yes, is? To is to visit orphans and widows uh, in their distress. Yeah, the orphans exactly. and the widows. Yep, I use that verse when I sign my books. Well, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and what an inspiration. I, mm. I'm so thankful that the Lord sent you this way, and I know the viewers are to hear this wonderful, wonderful story. And uh, if you write books along the way, come and see us again. I, I know we, all of us would like to have an update. Thank you. I definitely will. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're welcome. We are out of time, but you stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. 
Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers and we thank you for your support. Well, have you ever heard a story quite like that one? I never have. And how sweet, how wonderful. I was thinking of the scripture which states, Children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. And I compare that with what's going on in the United States today with children. I never in my wildest imagination would have thought that this, quote, godly nation, we'd have a lot of congressmen in favor of infanticide. And that's after the baby is born, let it die. You've seen this in heathen rituals around the world where people had no idea who the living God was. But there's a, there's a lot of Americans that are willing willing to throw a baby away. And there's a lot of neglected kids, you know, as they get older and there's a lot of foster care and God bless all those foster parents out there. I, I think you have a special place in the heart of God. But you can't help but admire a family who really believed they heard from the Lord to adopt, they thought, an international child and ended up with four, a different country. They didn't speak the same language. But you know, when God guides, he provides. And I couldn't help but believe that God guided them to the exact children he wanted them to have. They're now living in my home state of Colorado. They're going to school, they're learning English. And only God knows what will happen with those. Can't help but really really admire Jeffrey Moore and his wife. I want to show you their book one more time. It's called We Believed. I think you'll really enjoy the, the details of this book. But when you think of this and you think of the things going on in America, it's time for us to get back to the Word of God, back to an America that was really founded on basically Christian principles and how high, highly God regards life. Hope you'll choose life, and I hope you'll remember that when you go to the ballot box, my friends. That's very, very important. We're in trouble right now. But we are out of time also. So join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 